Greetings, Trinity Lutheran Church, the community of Blue Earth, and all those joining us at home. Some announcements and some news in the body of Christ before we gather for worship. First, welcome to our music service in December. Each year we have a service that we try to offer um, the gifts of our musicians here at Trinity. And we are so thankful for the Handbell Choir and for the Trinity Choir members who chose to participate in this Music Sunday. We're thankful for all their gifts and the opportunity to share Advent and Christmas music with you. Just a couple of announcements. Please note that December 19th is our Christmas program at Trinity in person, and we will record that service for later viewing. If you do come in person, please note we have space in the sanctuary and then also some room, some overflow room in the gathering space, depending on how many people arrive. Following that service, our youth group are having a free will donation fundraiser of cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls from the Huntley Cafe sold in singles and in six packs. And so if you are hungry on December 19th, then around Trinity, around 1030 when worship ends, we have cinnamon rolls to share with you. And we, that free will donation supports our youth group going to the youth gathering in 2022. Also, please note for Christmas Eve, we have a three o'clock service and a seven o'clock service with drive-through communion, a low contact option from five o'clock till 545. And that is just through the Trinity parking lot. We hope to have some music playing and some luminary lights if you wish to partake in that option. Please note that our three o'clock and seven o'clock services, we are inviting people to register either by calling the church or by going online and signing up. On our online pages, uh, there is a link to sign up for those services. We have space in the sanctuary, and we'll also have overflow space in our gathering place. Folks are asked to come, bring a mask, and enjoy celebrating the birth of Christ together in whatever way works for you. That service will also be recorded for later viewing. Also, please note some news in the body of Christ. We continue to hold Kentucky and Tennessee and all those places in our country that have struggled with natural disasters in our prayers. We actually invite you to continue to pray for Trinity's prayer list. And during December, we are designating our noisy offering towards disaster relief. And so if you would like to support that cause, please let Trinity know either bring your noisy offering or donation or be in touch with us and we can make that connection to support these people in a time of need. We know people have done that for us in many other times. Finally, you may notice we are getting close to our due date. My husband and I, our baby is due in late December. And if I do not see you on Christmas Eve or into the new year over New Year's, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you. Please welcome Reverend Daphne Hamburg, who will be covering for me during maternity leave in January and February. And so we give thanks for her gifts and her time among us. And we invite you to see and enjoy her sharing of the word and her time with Trinity. I believe all other announcements can be found in our newsletter and online. And so let us gather for worship.
Welcome on this third Sunday of Advent. Today we continue our journey of preparation for the Christ child. Many of us have holiday traditions passed on from our families. They guide what we do and help us to connect with the stories and persons that came before us. Today we look to our ancestors in the faith for in the faith for insight and guidance on how to prepare for Christ's arrival. For many of us, we know the story, the songs, we can perhaps even recite the words from scripture. But what about behind the scenes? Let us wonder what people felt, experienced, and did to prepare for Christ's arrival in their lives. We begin this time of preparation with the lighting of the Advent wreath. Please note, many churches recognize this Sunday as God a day, Sunday or Joy Sunday, and so the candle is pink to mark the nearness of Christ's coming. Let us join in a word of prayer. We praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles of this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We will now have the lighting of the room.
A reading from Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this must be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went to haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned home. Oh Lord, how shall I meet you? In this season of Advent, we ask that question. Let us turn to those who also had to prepare for the coming of the Savior, including Jesus' mother, Mary. We do not know for sure Mary's age, but scripture implies that she was young. In those days, engagement held the commitment of marriage. For Mary to be expecting while engaged to be married was a perilous set of circumstances. Despite her willingness to serve her God in this way, Those months of change in her body and in her place in society could have been very lonely. Never having borne a child before, did she have moments of fear, uncertainty? There are moments preparing to be a parent or being a parent which we know are not the most joyous. And yet her commitment remains throughout her pregnancy, birth, and the life of following Jesus. Perhaps there's something for us to learn here about the life of faith and our connectedness to God. Let us also consider Elizabeth. What a relief it must have been for Mary to visit her cousin. The solidarity of someone who knew her firsthand physical experience, who had also experienced judgment of others in relation to having a child. For Elizabeth, it was the societal shame of not bearing children when it was expected in those times. Imagine their relief, their support in the midst of unknowns. Their two children would meet again, one would prepare the way and proclaim the coming of the other. Could preparation include simply being with those in the midst of what is and leaning into the hope that is given to us?
Scripture from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to the public, disgrace planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relation with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Jesus' mother Mary was not the only one anticipating the coming of the Christ. The Gospel of Luke shares Mary's story, while the Gospel of Matthew tells of the man who would be Jesus' earthly father. Joseph, the man engaged to Mary, had his world turned upside down in a variety of ways. Their two families had most likely made the arrangement for the two to wed. They were betrothed as good as married, except in the manner of family. Yet Mary was pregnant through the work of the Holy Spirit. Logically and socially, the appropriate thing to do was to put her aside quietly, but then Joseph had a dream. Some may wonder how decided or made up was Joseph's mind before the dream, or how assured he felt or not upon waking. Mary did not have to be Joseph's responsibility, and yet he bestowed safety and care upon her and the child she carried. He not only brought her safety to Beth- Bethlehem, but also to Egypt, and finally to Nazareth, and the era of Galilee. What might it mean in our preparation for Christ's arrival to care for those when we are not obliged to do so? When our neighbors might be, what neighbors might discover? What miracles might we participate in? Where might Jesus appear in our lives when we appear and support others?
A reading from scripture from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. In Luke, we hear the story of the shepherds, but it is the wise men whose story is in the Gospel of Matthew, whose preparation might be overlooked. We often assume there are three, although scriptures does not specifically say, due to the three gifts represented. Perhaps the tradition didn't come any, it didn't want anyone to go empty-handed to the birth of the Prince of Peace. We often see the wise men placed with a shepherd in the manger scenes, but according to scriptures, they most likely came later, when Jesus was still a baby, but not yet over the age of two. These sages, sometimes called magi or kings, arrived at a home rather than a borrowed cattle stall during the census. Their preparations to reach the child were much longer than the shepherds. Tradition holds that they were possibly priests who paid close attention to the constellations and the stars and traveled quite a distance to meet the newborn king. Western tradition has given us them the names of Melchor, Caspar or Gaspar, and Belzadar. It is said their ages vary, perhaps the ages of 20, 40, and 60, so that they not only represent different regions, but different stages of life. Encyclopedia Britannica states, according to the Western Church tradition, Belzazar is often represented as a king of Ibria and sometimes Ethiopia. Malachor is king of Prussia and Gaspar is king of India. Together, they represent the world's recognition of the incarnation. With their animals and provisions, they travel many miles and roads. And upon arrival, they bow and kneel to the young king in acknowledgement of the power and the reign of Christ. How can our own bodies prepare for Christ's appearance in our lives? Do we not think about our bodies whenever, whatever age they may be? Can acknowledgement of God's presence and commitments to God's people? Do we realize, gifts aside, what we say about Christmas with what we do with our bodies?
our time to prepare. I invite you to turn in your bulletin to the scripture from Isaiah and let us read it responsibly. Please respond with the bold portion. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, for she has served her term. Her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And a voice cries out, Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We too are called to prepare. But how, in a world teeming with places to go, people to see, tasks to accomplish, how do we create a space for the celebration of Christmas? How do we acknowledge that Christ's birth changes our lives? Perhaps like Mary, we entrust ourselves to be present in our current circumstances and recognize God's promises in the midst of unknowns. Perhaps like Joseph, we can reach out to others. Perhaps, like the wise men, we can use our own bodies to proclaim the good news that Christ is coming and God is with us. Whatever we may do, may we look for God, who has sought us out to be our Savior and the Savior of all people.
this season we are connected to those who have come before, to all those in the body of Christ who are prepared for Christ's coming, our faith ancestors, our family members past and present. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people shall see it together. Let every heart prepare him room. Receive this blessing. May God, the holy parent, fulfilling the promise, the holy child waiting to be born, the Holy Spirit illuminating the way, the trying God in whose presence we wait, prepare and bless you now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.